Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the module 3 of uh, AI ML super important questions in continuation with the previous two videos of module 1 and 2. So in this video I will be discussing uh, 6 questions which are super important from the module 3 which are most repeated. I will be telling you what all you have to write and what all you have to uh, not miss at any cost uh, for getting full marks in module uh, 3. So if you uh, like this video and want more videos like this make sure hit the like button and uh, subscribe to my channel to uh, show your support to me and let's get started. This document link can be found in the uh, description box. <clears throat> so in this video I will be discussing the uh, 6 questions in very brief and whatever is the numerical thing and the things in the depth that is already discussed in the um, theory video you can watch that okay. So uh, the first question what we have is uh, what is decision tree definition algorithm and example very important question you need to understand what is decision tree okay so what is decision tree in decision tree this is the example you have to write and this is the theory concepts you have to write and after that you have to write what is the algorithm as well so basic decision tree or ID3 algorithm is uh, also it is uh, known as those th uh, three things you have to write in this question okay so what is decision tree a decision tree is like a tree which uh, you can form some decisions okay it's as simple as that you'll be having something let's take this example example itself and understand here you have a uh, feature called as outlook and outlook can be of three types sunny overcast and rain and if it is sunny the best classifier is humidity and in that you have high and normal and you have no or yes based on the person will play tennis or not this kind of representation is called as decision tree okay and the theory what you have to write is in the decision tree you will be uh, starting with a root and you will be classifying it further based on how many attributes are there you will be choosing the best attribute again you will be classifying it based on the subsets formed and the uh, possible attributes available like that you will be classifying until you classify all the training examples that is called as uh, decision tree representation and example next we have the algorithm in the algorithm you are considering three things id3 example target attribute and attribute what is example example are the training examples target attribute is the attribute whose value is to be predicted by the tree attribute is a list of other attributes present other than the attribute and returns a decision tree that correctly classifies the given examples okay first step is to create a root node for the tree if all the examples are positive return positive if all the examples are negative return negative if the attribute is empty at that time return the best classifier which is most common valued of the attribute if these, if these three cases are not there that means it's a mixture of uh, positive and negative example at that time you have to do the following select an attribute a from the list that uh, best classifies the examples select the decision tree as the root node for a and for each attribute of a at that time you have to classify what is the attributes of a it is sunny overcast and rain in this case next you have to see if all classifies properly again the same thing you'll be doing if it's uh, not uh, classifying all as uh, same you have to again call the same function for the uh, subsets and uh, subsets found until you find out either yes or no for each of these cases that's how the decision tree algorithm works you can practice this and write uh, and keep this in mind super important question from exam point of view the numerical also can be asked from here i'll be discussing that in a separate video in the upcoming videos so for now let's move to the second question super important one which is entropy information gain and overfitting entropy means what you are class uh, you are seeing what is the impurity of a collection of a sample for example if you have 10 chocolates in fridge and uh, instead of one chocolate it is a mouse okay like a dead rat you have uh, stored in your refresh data nine chocolates and one dead rat that is what is the impurity is one by nine right like that how impure the sample is that is known as its impurity okay like that he, here also will be using the impurities for positive and negative examples in the positive and negative most impurity is equal number of positive equal number of negative for example two positive two negative this is the most impure data set the pure data set is four positive zero negative or zero positive four negative that is purest data sets okay so uh, that one will be calculating if it is purest data set it will be zero if it is most impure it will be one higher entropy higher impurity done then the formula used is entropy is equal to minus p positive log 2p positive minus p negative log 2p negative and we have the uh, information gain as the expected reduction in the uh, entropy when we uh, solve for the entropy there is an expected reduction in that that reduction is calculated using information gain okay so this is the formula gain of s uh, comma is equal to entropy of s minus summation of all the values from the attribute values sv by s entropy of sv an example is given as follows there are values of wind as weak and strong and the s is having nine positive examples five negative examples and weak is having six and two uh, uh, and uh, strong is having three and three okay then we'll be calculating the gain of uh, wind uh, with respect to s how we'll calculate entropy of s already calculated 0 
8 by 14, 6 plus 2 is 8, so 8 by 14, 14 is total number, 9 plus 5, and 6 by 14, 3 plus 3 is 6, so it will be uh, taken here, and since we took this here, S of strong will be taken here, since we took this here, entropy of weak will be taken here, multiplied it, find out the answer. The lesser the answer is, the purer the data set is, the higher the answer is, the impure the data set is. Now how this answer came in all, this example I have discussed specifically in the theory video, watch that. The third question which is avoiding overfitting, I'll discuss in this question, upcoming question, okay. So the third super important question is issues in decision tree learning. When we learn the decision tree, there is an issue. There are five issues, you have to remember this keyword AIAHH, okay, AIA double H. A is avoid overfitting the data. Overfitting means what? If you have a graph here and the graph is somewhat as follows and you train the machine so well, what happens is it will start learning the exact noise data and the specific patterns here. So what will happen is it will produce more error if you give a graph uh, of this kind. At that time, what will happen? It will be not able to predict the uh, noise values from here. Like for example, if I uh, use this same model which is um, kept here for predicting the uh, trend here, what will happen? It will just predict a trend like this and many errors will come. Instead of that, if I just learned what is the general trend in this uh, way, it will produce far lesser errors if I produce, uh, if I use the general trend. That is what is the issue of overfitting. You can use it, you can use two ways to avoid it. The uh, two ways are reduce error pruning and roll, uh, rule post pruning. Pruning means cutting off. Cutting off the errors before or after. Those are two ways to avoid overfitting. Don't read much regarding this, write in your own words. Next, we have incorporating continuous value attributes. Continuous value attributes means what? Between 1 and 10, all the values. It can be 1.0001, 1.002, 1 and so on. So, what is the way to avoid continuous uh, values and incorporate that is we'll be dividing the set into uh, separate inter uh, intervals. Like, for example, here you have our uh, temperature ranges. So, you can divide into temperature greater than 35 as high, medium as less than 10 degree, and between between 35 degree and low means less than 10 degree okay medium means between 10 and 35 degree so like that you can produce subsets and that is called as incorporating continuous valued attributes for more for more information you can read this one okay next we have alternate measures for selecting attributes in alternative uh, measures what we have is <coughs> the uh, one of the attributes can have many uh, one of the uh, values can have many attributes right so like for example date date can be very specific March 4 1979 March 5 1979 and so on till 2023 like that we'll have many different attributes and this can classify it very accurately on what date what has occurred right but that will be a very large data set that's the uh, issue regarding this one third issue fourth is handling the missing attributes if there are missing attributes do two things either put an average value or put a probable value okay that is how we handle the uh, missing attributes see assign most common value or assign the uh, simply the most common value or the probable value okay just two words you have to remember don't read the whole sentences okay Last one is handling attribute with differing costs. To calculate a uh, disease of a person, there are many attributes uh, taken into consideration like temperature, biopsy result, pulse, blood test result, and they have different costs associated with them. So we'll be considering that one which is the lowest cost and classifies the best. Okay, that's the uh, last uh, issue. AIA double H. Moving on to the fourth super important question, we have logical and or XOR representation, super super important question, very expected question, don't miss this at any cost. So what you have to do in this case is just that if they ask about and or or XOR, draw the truth table, make three columns 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, write down the answers and make this graph here. What is this graph? You'll be having two things here, A and B, assign some weights or else they will only give some weights and just that you have to uh, see it as follows, okay, like for example, A and 0 0.6. 0 into 0 0.6 plus 0 into 0 0.6 what is the answer 0 if it is 0 if it is less than 1 the answer is 0 only final answer is 0 if any answer you get as greater than 1 if you get as 10 the answer is 1 okay like that so here you got a 0 and 0 0.6 into 0 plus 0 0.6 into 0 is 0 only it is done correct answer 0 into 0 0.6 0 1 into 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 that is equal to 0 0.6 only it is less than 1 the final answer will be 0 like that we will be checking for all of these instances and calculating if it is same or not if it is coming correct this is the final weights assigned if it is not coming correct you have to apply a formula and find out the correct weights again that is discussed in the theory video so you can watch that to add your uh, add uh, to your answer list uh, like you have to implement that as well as the, as the numerical okay so watch that video <clears throat> that is about the uh, logical and in the same way they can ask for an or an xor make sure you write it and practice what you will do you will write it and practice okay that was about the fourth question moving on to the fifth super important question which is gradient descent and delta rule in both of these what we have we do not have the correct data 
when we don't have some correct values assigned or in life also see if you don't know something what has happened actually we tend to uh, make a story around it maybe this has happened maybe that has happened since that was the most probably that could have happened like that we'll uh, tell right that is only happening here also if you don't have correct outputs will be um making up a story and telling this is the most probable uh, thing that might have happened if the training examples are not linearly separable means it is not explicit zero or one delta rule converges towards a best fit approximation to the target concept then key idea behind delta rule is to use gradient descent okay so this was about the definition you have to write after that you have to write a few formulas like output is equal to w0 plus w1x1 plus w2x2 till w1xn w is the weight x is the inputs o is the output you can represent it in the vector form as follows calculate the errors find out uh, and update the uh, delta w values as well and these are the um, terms used here d is the set of training examples td is the target output od is the output e is the errors calculated by using that you can also derive the delta uh, gradient uh, training rule very important first thing what you have to write delta e of w is equal to delta e by delta w not delta e by delta w1 till delta e by delta wn after you have done that you will be calculating delta w the uh, error in the weight and you will be calculating and assigning it to the uh, addition of the, uh, the current weight so you'll get a, a new weight value okay like that you will keep on doing until you get the optimal weight values which gives us the correct output okay so these are the concepts you have to go through it and write in your own words calculate the errors at each time update the weights and see if the weights are giving the correct output if yes stop it if no again repeat it okay this is the uh, thing about the gradient descent and the delta rule you have to write Moving on to the last uh, super important question. This is the uh, derivation is the super important. I'll not be explaining here. I've already explained in the theory video. Watch that. Okay. So this is the algorithm for it. This also you can go through whatever I told you. Write in your own words. Don't by heart it. Write in your own words. Very simple. Consider all the uh, weights. Assign some random value. Initialize the delta w to zero. Find out the error in that, and then update the error by using this formula, and keep on doing until you reach the correct output. Then that was about the algorithm. The last question, which is the backpropagation algorithm, here you just not have to write a uh, backpropagation algorithm like a stupid person. You have to first write what is backpropagation. You have to make the diagram, explain what is uh, in that. I'll tell you how to do that. First, make this diagram. Like this, only you have to make, and you'll be having some hidden layers in between, and finally you'll be having an output layer. Okay. So here it will be assigned like this. Some uh, connections will be there, and you'll be having an output layer. And this is called as input. This is called as hidden. This is called as output layer. You'll be calculating the values, and once you get the values here, there will be some weights assigned here. Due to that, weight, you will get some value. If it is not correct value, if it is not close enough, again you will come back, update the weights, again do the same thing. That is called as backpropagation. For that, you will be using what some specific formulas. After written this much, you have to write this. Each training example is considered. N is the uh, learning rate. N hidden, N out, N uh, in is the network uh, input, output, and hidden layer uh, values, and we'll be assigning some uh, training examples uh, initial values. Finding out the errors in that, if it is uh, having more error, update the values. For updating, calculate the error term by using this one. For each hidden term, update the network by the given formula, and then again find out the values. This will continue, and this question marks the end of module three. If you want more videos like this, make sure hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.